Hi everyone, thanks for joining me. Welcome back to Carpe Diem Sailing. If you're new to the channel, my name's Marco. I'm a Sail Canada cruising instructor. And in today's video, I'll be talking about flag etiquette. Welcome to episode 49, Flag Etiquette. For show notes and helpful checklists, please go to www.carpediumsailing.com slash show notes. I have included a link in the description below. And now, let's get started. Flag etiquette, or flag protocol, is very rich in history and tradition. And specifically, I'm talking about recreational vessels here, um, not commercial vessels and any possible legal requirements they may um, have to uh, meet. So um, I have found that in my research, to make sure that I was getting the most correct factual information here for you, I did find some discrepancies. So depending on where you sail, you know, do some homework, look into your personal um, areas and, you know, if there are any legal requirements or different protocols that are specific to your area or your club. So what I have found is most of these are generated, uh, most of these protocols typically are generated by yacht clubs. And so if you're in a yacht club, I'm sure you'll be familiar with your own bylaws and, uh, and your own uh, protocols specific to your own flag etiquette. So I'm talking a bit in general here um, with some, uh, some discrepancies. And those links that I talked to, the sites that I went to to do my research, they're down below there if you want to go and dig deeper into, into this, um, you know, into the subject. So the first thing we're going to talk about um, is the types of flags that we're talking about here. Um, I will touch a little bit on the international code flags, but, uh, but not much. Again, there will be a link down below uh, if you want to know more about uh, international code flags. So I'm going to describe the flags and we're going to talk about where and when to fly them and that sort of thing. So the most senior position on the boat is reserved for your national flag or what's called a yachting ensign. So the national flag for us, or for me, is the Canadian flag. I am a Canadian registered vessel, and so I fly a Canadian flag. The yachting ensign is an ensign that is approved, or a flag that is approved for recreational vessels to fly instead of your national flag. In the U.S., it is the U.S. flag with an anchor surrounded by stars in the blue field when, with the red and white stripes. And in the UK, it is the Union Jack in the corner on a red field. So my understanding is that US or sorry, UK naval vessels fly a white field with the Union Jack in the corner. But for recreational vessels, the uh, yachting ensign is a red field with the Union Jack. So that one you can fly instead of your national flag if you so choose. The next position, um, most senior position on the vessel, is reserved for what we call the courtesy flag. So a courtesy flag is a flag of, of the country, um, of a foreign country that you are visiting, um, and it is only flown while you're in that country. The third next most senior position, if I am in a courtesy flag, uh, if I'm flying my courtesy flag, would be my Yacht Club Burgee. In home waters, the courtesy or the Yacht Club Burgee would fly in the second position of seniority. And then if I was in foreign waters and flying a courtesy flag, this would fly below. And then an officer's flag, if you happen to be on the executive of your club, would fly either instead of your Burgee or below the Burgee, depending on your club bylaws. So I mentioned code flags. So this particular code flag is for the letter Q or Quebec, and it also stands for the message, I am requesting free critique. And that is just an old way of saying my vessel is healthy and I'm looking for customs clearance. And this would be flown, best to my knowledge, in the starboard spreaders in that second position until you're cleared. Once you're cleared through customs and you're visiting in the country that you're visiting, this comes down and the courtesy flag goes up. And then once again, as you leave that country, the courtesy flag comes, if you go back to your home waters, the courtesy flag comes down. A couple of other um, code flags we're going to touch on is uh, the flag uh, N or November and Charlie. So November over Charlie, the flag November flown over Charlie is an international distress signal. Um, I do talk about these in my video on distress signals, so you can take a look 
at that if you would like. The This flag is the alpha flag. So the alpha flag stands for the letter A, and the message it represents is I have divers in the water and stay, you know, well clear at slow speed. Now, most people don't recognize the alpha flag as a dive flag, but they will recognize this one. So I thought I would you know, include it as well. And the idea is to stay about 100 yards or 100 meters away at slow speed and be aware that there are divers in the area. So this is your typical diver's flag, either that or the blue and white alpha. Be aware that there are divers in the water if, if either or both are being flown. So those are the types of flags. Um, there's another one I'm going to talk to you a little bit later called Bravo, and that's the letter B, but we'll talk about that when I come into in, in I'll show you an example of that in a little bit. So positions. The most senior position on the boat is at the stern, um, either on a staff off the transom, on the backstay, or in some very traditional cases I've seen, they talk about flying it off the leech of the mainsail. I have never seen a flag flown off the leech of a mainsail. I don't know if they mean actually sewn to the leech. I've not seen it. Traditionally, it's flown on a staff on a tra off the transom. And as far as the size of the flag, it should be... Actually, you know what? I'm going to get into sizes a little bit later on. Let's just talk about positions for now. So, just to reiterate, at the stern, um, on, the, uh, on a staff or off the leech. The next most senior is the courtesy flag. And uh, the courtesy flag is flown in that second position of seniority, and that is the starboard spreaders... Uh, on a signal halyard. So at the spreaders, on the starboard side, on a signal halyard, that is the second most senior position. The yacht club bird then would be either in that position or below it in the third position of seniority if you're visiting a foreign country and flying the courtesy flag. A club officer bird would be flying instead of or below your yacht club bird And I'm sorry if you're hearing some tapping. I've got a boat next door that somebody's doing some work on, so hopefully that won't be too distracting. The Pratik flag we've talked about, uh, my understanding is it flies on the starboard side in that second position until the courtesy flag goes up. Um, there are some special purpose flags they call novelty flags. Uh, we'll talk a little bit more about them uh, in a bit, but one, of, one example is the owner absent flag, which is a blue flag, and it would fly in the port spreaders, and apparently they should be flown sparingly. So, size. The national flag, the size of the national flag should be one inch long for every foot of length of your, your boat. And the staff should be twice the length of the vertical edge of your flag. So one inch for every foot of boat length of your boat for the length of the flag, and your staff should be, according to protocol, twice the length of the vertical edge of your, of your flag. So I've got an example here. A 33-foot boat would fly a 24 by 36-inch uh, yacht ensign or national flag on a 48-inch flag staff, or thereabouts. So when to fly these flags? So the national flag or your ensign should be flown from 8 in the morning until sunset, and it should only be flown when the vessel is occupied. The courtesy flag, as I mentioned, in foreign waters after clearing customs and after the pratique, the request for free pratique Quebec flag has been lowered, and the courtesy flag is then raised and then lowered once again once you clear back into your own waters. The alpha or the diving flag, divers in the water, pretty self-explanatory, and then the, ne the, the November over, uh, over uh, Charlie we talked about is a, an international distress signal. An upside down national flag or upside down ensign is also considered a, a, a distress signal, though I've never seen that used anywhere, but be careful not to fly your flag upside down. Somebody might think you're in trouble. Uh, the novelty flags I talked about, there's owner absent, guest, things like that. Um, I think they were mostly used back in the day of uh, before cell phones and texting so that they would fly. The uh, owner absent is a blue flag that would fly when the owner was not there so that it would save someone a trip, you know, rowing across an anchorage or from another boat or something like that to go visit. So they'd know that nobody's home when the blue flag was, was flying. The last thing I'm going to talk about is what's called dressing ship. So dressing ship is done in festive occasions for regattas, national holidays, that sort of thing, typically in Anchorage or in a marina. And you would take all your alpha numeric flags and you would fly them alternating the, um, the alphabet and the numerals. And it typically goes from the masthead to the bow and from the masthead to the stern. 
and uh, they're like I said, flown um, for festive purposes in uh, you know for regattas that sort of thing while in an anchorage or a marina, and then they would be lowered before heading out to sea. I said I would talk briefly about some code flags. Here we have the flag for the letter B or Bravo flag, and the message associated with it is carrying or taking on dangerous cargo. It's commonly flown by commercial vessels when fueling. This is the code flag for the letter O, or the Oscar flag, and its message is man overboard. This flag is commonly found on Dan boys or man overboard poles, but can also be flown on larger vessels during a man overboard emergency. Let's now watch a quick animation to review what I've been talking about in this video. The national flag is flown on a staff at the stern or at the leech. An approved yachting ensign may be flown as a substitute for the national flag and it is flown in the same positions. The courtesy flag is flown in the second most senior position at the starboard spreaders. A yacht club burgee is flown below a courtesy flag when in foreign waters or in the second position when in home waters. A yacht club officer's flag may be flown below or instead of the burgee. Novelty flags, such as this owner absent flag, are flown sparingly at the port spreaders. And finally, the Q or Quebec flag, request for free pratique, is flown upon entering foreign waters and is lowered to be replaced by a courtesy flag upon clearing customs. That's it for this episode. See you next time when I talk about marine first aid kits. Till then, I wish you all fair winds and following seas.